Hey guys, how are you all doing? It's your girl Cindy and I'm back again today with another GS. I trust you guys are doing great. Thank you so much for clicking to watch this video. Why are these white people fighting this white man? So I just want us to have a look at his videos. So he uses his platform to educate his fellow white people. Of course, he talks about racism, which we know that this is a conversation that makes white people uncomfortable now some of them are leaving racist comments in his comment section so he responds to those comments which i have put them together let's just hear from him and of course i'm gonna show you some of this comment please check these videos out racism is not a choice you were not taught to be racist you fellow white person like everybody else were born into a world that you did not create Everything you inherited, whether biologically or socially, was not your choice. And that's the same thing with racism. We were born into a racial caste system in which white-bodied individuals are the oppressor class. Whether you wanted that designation or not, that's the system that you and I were born into. We had no choice in the matter. However, once you become aware of how things are, once you've become educated about your role in how things are, then you have a choice. Do you want to stand firm and uphold the system you've inherited? Fighting with anyone and everyone that brings up privilege, equity, justice, racial oppression, or do you want things to change? More often than not, those of us that are white are so preoccupied with trying to separate ourselves from the group to justify and set ourselves apart as the good or safe white person. But when you live in a racial caste system, there's no such thing. We're all complicit in upholding the system until we start pushing against it and fight to dismantle it like our lives depend on it, because they do. Howdy, friend. Yeah, that's your choice. And one that most people wouldn't be willing to admit that they've made, so thank you for your honesty. But I wanna talk about the part where you write, I will not fight to help people who hate me. First, why do you think people hate you? Second, who do you think it is that hates you? And third, why do you think you'd be fighting for anyone other than yourself? One of the most challenging parts in talking about white supremacy culture with fellow white-bodied individuals is that we're so unaware of the ways in which whiteness has dehumanized us. We're pretty clear about how black, brown, indigenous, and other people of color have been dehumanized and oppressed, but we're not nearly as aware of the harm that white supremacy culture has done to us. So let's be very clear. When I fight against white supremacy culture, I'm fighting like hell for my humanity. And the only reason I'm even aware of how white supremacy culture has stripped me of my humanity is because of relationships with black, brown, indigenous, and other people of color. People who have graciously shared their experience of the hatred and oppression that's been poured out on them and their ancestors for centuries by people that look like me. The people that hate me are the ones that are bent on maintaining their safety and security. On the other hand, the people that you think hate us are just pleading with us to be human. You wrote, people use the past as a weapon against whites. History is in the past. Get to know one another. We didn't harm anyone, and most of us whites do not agree with the past, but can't change it. There's a lot going on in this comment, but what I think is happening is the thing that causes a lot of people to believe that I and other white anti-racists are operating out of a sense of white guilt. Because all I heard when I read this comment was, don't make me feel guilty about something I didn't do. And all I can say is, don't worry. I don't think anyone's trying to make you feel guilty for existing. Well, maybe some people are, but not most. And this is a major problem, because this is what so many white folks think people are saying, that we should feel guilty for being white. But no one is saying that. No one is saying that you should feel guilty for being white. No one is saying that you are responsible for what your ancestors did. All people are saying is that the system is still in place and we are the beneficiaries of that system. So they're trying to educate us about the system we inherited. So I would encourage you or any other white person that hears someone talking about systemic racism before you begin to get defensive and say something like, I'm not responsible for slavery or segregation because I didn't live during that time. Take a breath and listen. 
I can almost guarantee that you'll be pleasantly surprised because it's actually your defensiveness that drives things to a point of contention. Refusing to acknowledge or denying people's reality is what causes them to become angry. And that's what's happening when you say something like, we should just move on and get to know one another. Because in saying that, you're denying the lived experience of people right now, which means that you're not actually trying to get to know someone that has a very different experience of life than you do. You wrote, deconstruct whiteness and me and my community? What the fuck do you mean by that? Sounds like an ignorant comment. Yeah, no, that's the way things work. When you don't understand something, that makes the person that said that thing ignorant. Got it. A better way to respond might have been, what do you mean when you say deconstruct whiteness? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's break it down word by word. Deconstruct, to take apart or examine something in order to reveal the basis or composition often with the intention of exposing biases, flaws, or inconsistencies. And whiteness, or white racialized identity, refer to the way that white people, their customs, culture, and beliefs operate as the standard by which all other groups are compared. Whiteness is also at the core of understanding race in America. So, to deconstruct whiteness is to analyze where, why, and how whiteness shows up within ourselves, our community, and our nation. That is the primary focus of this channel. I really appreciate this comment because I remember growing up surrounded by other white folks and they'd always be saying that black people need to stop making everything about race. So then when I got older and I started to realize that literally everything in this country is about race, I began to wonder why it is that all the white folks I know want everyone to stop talking about race. And what became really clear to me is that the reason we white folks want everyone else to stop talking about race is because that system, that racialized social system, implicates us as the bad guys. And we think that black folks bring up race because they want us to suffer for what our ancestors did to their ancestors. But nothing could be further from the truth. Black folks didn't choose to be black in a racial caste system that oppresses black people. They didn't choose to be part of a system that oppresses them. So while we want everyone to stop talking about race because we don't wanna be the bad guys, black folks don't have a choice. You wrote, first of all, stop kissing ass. Secondly, not everything is black and white. I don't typically respond to comments like this, but this one was just too perfect. By saying stop kissing ass, you just showed everybody how you view this conversation. You see it as us versus them, black versus white. What's funny is I'm not saying I want things to be that way. I'm saying that our European ancestors set up the system that way. How a statement of fact causes you to think that I'm kissing anybody's ass only goes to show that you see this as a fight between black and white. And it makes sense that you see it that way because that's the way you were taught to think. You were taught, like I was, by our European ancestors that white means good and black means bad. So to see a fellow white person calling out that system, well, that would make that person a traitor, wouldn't it? So in so few words, you've called yourself out and showed that you don't even believe the words you say. You wrote, could we just live our lives? It takes way too much energy to be racist or anti-racist. Just be a decent person. It's not hard. I gotta say, your username is absolutely perfect for this comment. <laughs> well, normal average Nick, I suppose it depends on what you mean by being a decent person. Because the truth is, simply by living in the United States, it's pretty difficult not to participate in some kind of exploitation system. From the land we live on, to the phones we use, to the food we eat, to the cars we drive, to the clothing we wear. What does it mean to be a decent person with all of that going on? And I'll say this about it being too much energy to be racist or anti-racist. For those of us that are white folks, it takes absolutely zero energy to participate in the racial caste system. We don't have to do a single thing. We were born into it. So we can live our entire lives and we might not be overtly racist or hateful towards anybody, but our mere existence within the system means that we either further it or we put a spoke in the wheel of it. And this is why Angela Davis says, in a racist system, it's not enough to be non-racist, 
we must be anti-racist. So you're correct in one way to say that being anti-racist takes a lot of work because our conditioning would have us be otherwise. But as it pertains to being racist, that's just our conditioning. And just like any other healing work, it takes a lot of work. So by all means, keep doing you. But from my perspective, being a decent person means that you care about what your mind and your body are being used for. It means that you care about what happens to your neighbor. So here are the comments I grabbed from his comment section. Please pause to read if you want to. Now, I must say that I love the work that this white man is doing, despite the fact that his fellow white people are fighting him just for speaking up, just for, you know, um, speaking about racism, calling them out. And you could tell, you could tell that we still have this group of white people whom have decided that they are going to hold on to their racism, you know, um, towards black people, indigenous people, you know, they just don't want to let go of their racism in 2024. I'm making this video just to create awareness so that those people that always say, Cindy, why do you always talk about racism? It is gone. This is to let you all know that it is still here. Anyways, you guys, what you all have to say about this video? Let me know in the comments. And thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video, share, comment, and of course, come back for another video. I'm going to see you all in my next one. You all be blessed. Bye.